I first came across the word tensegrity probably 20 years ago, and I didn't mm. understand what it meant. What's it mean? Um, it's it's a, co a term that's coined by Buckminster Fuller, the architect, and it's it's basically a collaboration of two forces, tension and integrity. Right. Yeah, so tension and compression. Um, there are some installation artists, one called Kenneth Snelson, and another one called Tom Flemons, and um, they created these fantastic um, sort of structures that you see standing in parks and so on, which is um, aluminium rods with cables suspending them, and they would call them floating compression. Right. So they're basically the same thing, and it's a balance of forces. Yeah. The, the classic toys that we see are the rods with the elastic making the icosahedron structure, and everyone uses that saying, well, the wooden rods are the bones, and the elastic is the, the muscle and connective tissue. It's a model, it's a nice idea, and it does show us You've what is going on. I've got a similar <laughs> one here, which is um, a a vertebral structure so that we've got the, I'll take those out, we've got the wooden structures of the vertebra suspended with the red and the blue elastic. Yeah. So they're not really touching. So, you know, I can press that together, but it springs apart once again. This is probably a, it's a nicer version of it because we're showing some of the intrinsic muscles of the spine and so on. For the other ones, the icosahedrons are all balanced forces. And, you know, if we shorten one structure, then another structure is going to have to lengthen to deal with it. They're the classic models that are used for tensegrity. And it's, it's a great example for a body-wide balance because yeah. our skeleton cannot stand on its own. Whenever we find a, a skeleton in an archaeological dig, it's always independent bones. We don't really see any mm. muscle or soft tissues there. So the only way it's going to stand up is to add the soft tissues to it. So it could right. be that if we disappeared the bones from the body, it's still got an opportunity to stand because of fluid pressure. Yeah. That takes me back to Andrew Taylor still, because he was talking about abnormal pressures in one part of the body will create abnormal pressures in another. Yeah. So muscle is a pressurized unit. It's a fluid structure in a tough connective tissue bagging, like sausages in their skin, but multiple all around the body. And they're adherent towards the skin of the bone, the periosteum, as you know, yeah. And they've got certain points where they connect well, and then we can actually have the skeleton suspended. So bones don't really touch each other in general, and they've got space between them, as mm. you know. That is, a, that is a great model. This is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are no discs holding the vertebrae apart in that no, model. No, no. I mean, but I yet they stay apart. They stay apart. You know, mm. you can play around with that. There is another one that's a full-size one, and I've tried pushing it together. And what happens under a certain force, it resists it, and it, it can't get them to do that. Yeah. But I, I've got some bits of foam that I put in there because once we do this, just to, it's me playing as a, as a kid, and I put this around it, put some netting around it, we start to see something very different occur. And I use this when I'm running my courses, is that if I can put this very quickly, hopefully this will work because I know we're live. So the netting is the, the fascia? Yeah, so the netting is just an element of the, the fascial sheath because the spine itself is actually in a sheath of multiple planes. I'll only take it down that far. But what's happened immediately is now that structure's become more stable. Yeah. It's less floppy than it is down there in that bit. Mm. And if I put more and more of these nets, I've got loads of these that come from wine bottles, so that says a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, it, it makes for a more stable structure. So we have the anterior ligament of the spine, but in the anatomy yeah. books, you always see the anterior ligament as an independent structure, yeah. a bit like someone stuck masking tape along the front of a skeleton. And there it is. Yeah. But that's not what you find when you come to dissect it. It's yeah. just basically a bumpy thing in the middle of the body covered in strong connective tissue. Yeah. So it's a robust structure. And when we see it in that situation, we wonder how it ever moves. And I'm, glad, I'm really glad that we've now got an answer to the question about whether drinking wine is good for your structure. Well, well absolutely. It gives, you, it gives you good connective tissue. <laughs> <around the spine. laughs>